wrote all of that to basically highlight this. If you look, look at, you know, K11 is the same for a bar. There's no change, right? But look at K12 and K22, or the second term in K22, right? Previous to this, we only had, in the stiffness matrix, terms that were derivatives of the shape functions, or the shape functions themselves, right? But now we have this thing. Right? So we actually have a function of what we're solving for in the stiffness matrix. So we're solving for W, is one of the things we're solving. So we might write that we have that we have a stiffness matrix that's a function of the unknown vector u times u equal to f. And this is the equation we have to solve for u. So nonlinear. We can't just simply invert ku because it's not there's not it's not constant. It's a function of what we're solving for. So one way to solve this is to use an iterative technique. So we can evaluate KU at a step n and solve for U n plus 1. All right, so the solution n plus 1 is equal to the inverse of ku at n times f. Okay? And so the idea here is that n is just a, it's an iterative step. So we, we'd start with initial guess of u's and we'd plug them in to evaluate k and then we'd invert it and we'd try again. And we'd keep trying until some con convergence criterion is met. So where the difference between what we solve for it u n plus 1 minus u at n is over the magnitude of u n plus 1 is less than some small number, right? Say, you know, 10 to the minus 6th or something, right? So you can actually solve linear systems this way, truly linear systems this way. Um, and if you do that, th there, this procedure is known as like the Gauss-Seidel iteration, right? You might remember that. Problem is, this method stinks. And let's see. So, I mean, basically what we're doing here is solving a system of equations, right? And so, this is a small system of equations. We, we, we want to solve for, for the roots, right, where this line crosses this circle. But it's, it's nonlinear. This is a nonlinear system of equations, okay? And so, we want to solve this. And if we use this Gauss-Seidel type iteration, then we have to we have to start with an initial guess, right? So let's say that our initial guess is here, and we want to solve for that root, okay? And so I'm going to do this iterative procedure, and you're only going to visual, you know, I'm not going to show you the mat the equations. You're just going to visualize this thing honing in on that root, okay? Hey, it worked. Boom, right on it, right? 
one iteration, I'm, I'm basically there. Okay, so when this slider bar moves across the top, those are, those are iterations. I don't know, there's six or seven. But you can see, you know, at the first iteration, it moves really close, and then it moves a little bit, and then it kind of stays there. Okay? But let's try, let's use this as our initial guess and try to find that thing, right, using the same procedure, right? Close. Whoa. What happened? Oh, crap. Where'd it go? It didn't converge or diverge, in fact. So I started initial guess, close, farther away, off the screen. Right. So this method is uh, not a good method. And if you look at the actual numbers, you can see, you know, so th those are the, this is the initial guess, and th these are the computed solutions using that iteration scheme. Right. So, th this method, this iter gauss seidel type iteration method is extremely sensitive to the initial conditions. And so, this is only two, you know, Luckily, with two equations, I can plot them, see where they cross each other, and I can come up with a pretty good initial guess, right? I mean, I could guess really close, and I could converge, right? But if you have a million equations, how can you visualize it? How do you know where your initial guess is, right? So, so this method is not that not a, not the best way to do it. So another method, or a better method, is the Newton-Raphson method. And you probably all have done this in one dimension. I mean, this is like, if you didn't learn anything else in numerical methods, hopefully you learned Newton-Raphson. I mean, it's, it's sort of the, the one thing that's always taught and probably the first thing you learn. You know. Um, but you probably didn't do it in, in higher than one dimension. And so in higher than one dimension, which is what we're solving here, you know, a system of nonlinear equations will rewrite or define, will rewrite our equation. So now K U U minus F is equal to zero, and we'll define ku u minus f as some residual, okay? Because it's it's not going to identically equal zero because this thing is not a linear operator. Right? We can we can linearize it, and we can we'll have some residual, right? So if we Taylor expand this thing.
right, so then we can use this procedure. So K, KT is the, the linearization, okay, of the not, the not, so you have the nonlinear form. We're going to linearize it about the point UN. So what this means, like in the setting of the type of problems we're interested in solving in this class, the mechanics problems, right, we're going to continuously deform the body, right? And in each iteration or each step of the deformation, we're going to we're going to linearize the equations about that configuration. So we're going to linearize it about the deformed configuration, okay? And then we'll we'll solve again, right? And continue to solve. And so then you know the solution of this. And we'll continue doing this iteration until the same type of convergence criterion is observed. And so then, let's go back. Now let's use Newton Raphson. On the same problem, same initial guess. Remember what happened last time. When, I, when my initial guess was there, I jumped over here, here, and then shot off the page, right? So now we'll use a Newton Raphson to solve the same problem. So, and the beauty of this guy is. When it does converge, it converges really fast. It converges quadratically. So you'll get a you'll get a doubling of the redu of the reduction and the you'll get a doubling in the reduction of the residual. So th the idea is you're trying to you're trying to draw drive the residual to zero, right? Because that would be the true equilibrium case. So you're trying to drive the, the re residual to zero, and using this method, you'll get a reduction in the residual by more than twice each time. When it converges, which you need some nice properties of the tangent stiffness matrix for it to converge, it needs to be positive definite for one. So if you have, say, negative eigenvalues in your tangent stiffness, then this is probably not the best method. <clears throat> so obviously, I'm just exposing you to one little solver. It's the most common used nonlinear solver, but you know. For really complex problems, you can teach a whole class just on solvers. Right? So, 